Let's discuss some of the drawing tools, the entity tools under the graphics drop down menu. We've already, I think, discussed the point. I've used the point marker here to show the vertices of a polyline. The point marker can be changed in size and in shape. The line command is quite straightforward, a simple line, you just simply draw. And as you move around, I've got the one of the options that controls whether you draw a horizontal or vertical line on. It's called the polar option. If I go to um, polar tracking, you'll notice that I've ticked this box and I've got an incremental angle of 45. That means that if I right click, call up the line command again, I can draw from here there to there, horizontally to the right, but then I can come down here at uh, at an angle that's dictated by the 45 degree setting, so I can go straight up there and then off again at 45 degrees and down there and so on. So I'm drawing a series of individual lines, but I've got the polar snap settings on and that enables me to draw horizontally, vertically or at an angle, and you can change that particular angle, but I digress a little. So we're looking at the graphics drop down. We can do simple lines or a ray or a construction line. Now a ray starts at the, the origin of the point we place the entity and then just goes from start to infinity, whereas a construction line radiates top and bottom off to infinity. And they're very, very useful, of course, when you are building new geometry. We've got a polyline which we've discussed. A spline is a, a curving shape, and I've got one here drawn in magenta. Um, and you can see we can we can dynamically swing things around and change the shape. Every one of these handles can be moved and changed in position. A polygon is, as we see here, that's a five-sided polygon. Of course, a rectangle is a four-sided polygon. So we're moving down through these. A circle is pretty obvious. Um, there's a circle there. And when we click on it, we have a center point and the grips or uh, four tangent points. No, they're not tangent points, are they? They're, they're four, four quadrants of the circle are shown by the grip there. Uh, an ellipse has a long axis. Here's one here. We've got a long axis and a short axis. Again, you can bend those at will to change the dynamically change the shape of the object. Single line text is the text that I've put in here to show, to label that as circle and arc and so on. Here's an arc. There's a center point, end point, which again you can swing around. You can change the, if you like, the, the radius of the arc just by dynamically dragging. Um, Multi-line text takes a block of text and I have a block of text here and you can pick it and move the handles and that reformats or reshapes the text and it will always be enclosed by the rectangle denoted by those handles. The barcode you can insert any one number of different barcodes micro QI code just draw it and there it's done. You can put a website or some sort of um, reference to a URL behind one of those. Um, what else have we got? Dimensions, um, linear aligned coordinate, that will be a topic for another movie. The arrow just draws that arrow that you see there. Hatching is where you use, where you load a hatch pattern and you hatch some sort of shape. Perhaps the best shape to pick would be a polyline. So if I drew a polyline like so and closed it, changed my drawing colour to some other colour like magenta, and then said I'm now going to hatch that shape. No selected entities, we need to select it first. Now I'm going to hatch it. Up pops a path to a hatch pattern file and that means that I can pick say line horizontal lines the scale 
Note that the density here is very, very high. So what I'm going to do is change the density. And as I increase it, the number of entities that are going to be put into that space drops. And I'd recommend you try and stick around one to two or three. You can look in there, we can select that hatching. It is a little too coarse. So we'll bring that down from 10,000 to 2,000 and see what the result of that is and now our lines are more closely spaced so depending on your need just change it but it's a lot, lot easier to start with a widely spaced hatch pattern than to have them too dense your software might go off on an endless loop we change the angle to 45 and now there's our 45 degree hatching the viewport we've dealt with in an earlier movie. A block is where you take, as so I've done here, I've taken the rectangle and the spiral and combined the two together here, and I've made that into what's called a block. If I select it, it's one entity, I've called it a splash pad. So if I said graphics insert a block, I'd have a drop down list of the blocks associated with this drawing. There is in fact only one of them and I can stamp an additional one in in that way. Finally we've got a raster image. If I pick raster image it shows me this box. I've loaded one and I can insert it into the drawing. So let's do that and pop it in. So that's a raster image, a JPEG file that I'm inserting into this environment. There's another option for ECW files. They're very big files used in geographic information system and Lightcat EXE is capable of displaying those um, very big files very easily indeed. What I might do is save that one. I'll go to new file and I'll say graphics ECW and I've picked one up from the city of Vancouver and there it is. That's a very detailed aerial view of the city of Vancouver. And you can see the phenomenal detail that we get in it displayed in, to use a colloquial term here, in the, sh in the shake of a dead lamb's tail very, very quickly. So I hope that deals with the entities in the graphic drop-down menu.